<clears throat> hey y'all welcome back to the ranch i'm jared paul this is my wife laura she just hit her 24th week pregnant uh with our baby Stella lucia so we're really excited and from a friend slash client we just got this awesome fern so we wanted to take it out of this terrible soil that's from the nursery and get it into a nice pot that used to house a lavender plant so it's got like a little hue of purple and a nice texture on the side and it's a little bit deeper and larger so we could let the roots expand so technically this isn't a bonsai however it's for the baby so it's fitting into jarhead bonsai so this is a rossi maidenhair fern six inch rossi maidenhair fern six inch and it's really cool because it's got these really tiny foliage tiny leaves you know you see lots of ferns they have those big aggressive leaves and nice big wingspan they're easy to grow so that'll be nice you know because um, Stella's room is on the southwestern part of the house so not so much like tons of growing light nice natural light um, and that's part of the reason why we chose it for her so I think a plant like this will be perfect for it so what we're gonna do is get it potted up and Laura's going to prune out anything that looks like sick or dying. And we'll see uh, what we've got for the baby's first plant. So that's what's coming up on today's episode of Jarhead Bonsai. Mm -hmm. All right, babe, I'm going to grab some scoops. So I'm just adding some of our bonsai soil to this because a light, airy soil would be great for a fern. There's a lot of ferns considered air ferns, and that's not necessarily because they only need air to grow, but it's because they like a lot of oxygen to their roots. So just put in, I put a little screen in the base of this pot and filled it about three or four inches, inches to, um, to raise the soil level. And now this thing is like... It's a total nursery plant, so the entire pot was roots. So I'm just gonna take off the base that was actually shaped like the base of the pot. Recycle those roots for some mulch. Wow. Those roots are tight. Mm -hmm. So I loosened them up on the bottom so that they could grow there. And then just across like three of the points along the, the turn, I'm going to cut them so that there's some bare root heads to go ahead and grab and grow some new roots. One, two, and... to show what I, you what I'm talking about. I did like a vertical cut down here just to get those roots loosened up so we could get some new roots growing here and then over here. So three spots and then the entire base has been opened up so that those can grow into this size of a pot because these plants actually do way better with a, um, a root bound system. So it's okay if your roots are really tight and something like stuff in these because that's what they're looking for. You go ahead and hold it like you're doing mm -hmm. a ponytail there. Yeah. So I'm using some like gangsta bonsai soil for this because it's the only soil I have at this time. I carried the rest of the recycled topsoil and stuff from the recycled plants uh, down to the tree farm. And we're gonna lighten up our, our bunny, veggie, and fruit gardens with that soil by tilling it into the dense soil that we used last year. And I think like besides the bunnies eating our fruits and veggies, that was our issue, it was uh, bad soil. It was heavy manure and heavy topsoil and it just was way too dense and way too potent on the manure. So this year we're gonna do way better. <laughs> That's the goal. <laughs> All right, cool. 
we've got this bad boy planted. So what we're gonna do is get it watered in and then we'll do a conclusion with showing you Stella's little nursery and uh, where this cutie's gonna go. Stand by. All right, y'all. So here we have it in the nursery. I'll back it out while Laura thinks about what, what she wants to prune. So as you enter, she refabbed a dresser right after um, we got this hardy piece to refurbish because she does like staining and distressing and all sorts of redesigns on furniture. We found out she was pregnant, so she didn't feel comfortable using chemicals anymore. So ordered some local bird stickers and then bird handles to add onto this antique, really hardwood dresser. I know it's hardwood because I carried it. It was a million pounds. And then we got the little bird and I love it because it almost, you know, it looks like an intentional bonsai tree lamp. We got the little box that spins with all the different ultrasound photos, a little frame from her sister with those as well. So the fern and the other beautiful air purifier, the spider plant, will go right next to the crib, which isn't here yet. This is actually the bassinet that'll go next to our bed in our room. Um, underneath a little rocker for baby Stella. It like vibrates and rocks and does all this crazy stuff. That's her tree and natural background backdrop. Going around the room out there, we got a little front porch. Um, which is Western facing. So in the afternoon, we'll have some nice sun changing table from an old uh, office secretary, Bob Marley, because everybody needs a little love. Some more of the bird mirrors because babies, you know, love to be able to look at themselves and interact. Nice little stained glass. This is the Stella Lucia, the star that I got for Laura for our anniversary. And that was to, um, you know, first anniversary is supposed to be paper. So I got her a certification of the Stella Lucia star and it gives us the coordinates. And over here, it gives us the, um, the constellation, the registration number, registration date, and the official certificate. So that's pretty cool. I like that stuff. And then we got some tropical plants, uh, blue jacaranda, Norfolk Island Pine, that um, Italian fig you saw, lemon scented gum, um, uh, Canary Island date palm. Thank you, baby. I think that's where my broski Ian went for his honeymoon. Uh, blue jacaranda, and then some bobabs that are in dormancy with their meerkats, and some more air freshening, a couple of other uh, spider plants. So, this is a rocker. It's a nice gray cushion, but we keep this blanket on it because we do not close the gate during the day and Millie will come in and just to show that like she wants to be a part of everything, she'll lay on that and get it all muddy and covered in hair and everything before <laughs> Stella comes. So <laughs> yeah. All right. I gave you enough time. What we prune him. This one. All right. So we got some old growth coming off the front. Boom, boom. Laura likes to keep things full. So if she clips even one more, I'd be surprised. This one looks dead. I can't. Looking nice. See, initially I thought this was like brown dead growth, but it's actually the new growth comes in greenish, reddish, brownish, mm -hmm. and then it turns into the darker green. <laughs> this thing's gonna stay real full. <laughs> Just picture pick your front. <laughs> oh my gosh. Nice work, young lady.
That looks nice. You can always see how it develops to the room and then go again at it late summer. <laughs> All right, I was hoping you were going to do that anyway, so <laughs> <laughs> victory. All right, y'all, so 24 weeks down, 16 to go on little baby Steli. <laughs> so that's going to do it for today's episode of Jarhead Bonsai, y'all. Hope you enjoyed yourself. Um, pretty basic fern, but lots of fun if you're decorating your baby's room, um, the nursery, <laughs> go ahead have fun with it you don't have to do the cliche bright pink and bright blues whether it's a boy or a girl you know have fun with it do you do you and um anyways we had fun so hope to see you next time here at the ranch i'm jared paul take care y'all cheers